You're watching the Corvette Channel. If you like what you see, please subscribe. For us, the cars are so fast, the aerodynamics are really a safety issue. It's not like you can just pen any design and then just apply it over the rest of the body. So doing thumbnail sketches, early ideas, it helps us understand the lay of the land more or less, you know, the opportunities that we have within the aerodynamics of this car. When you look at the new mid-engine Stingray, you can see the effect of aircraft design. Lean, uh, purposeful surface development, and in particular, the aerodynamic aspect. In terms of the three elements that play a part in that, drag, of course, that's the efficiency of air going over the surface, cooling, and then downforce, keeping the vehicle stable. Those fundamentals were real important at the beginning. And once you nail those down, then it kind of gets into more of the sculpture of the car. We see the car evolving. And we have this great process where it's part art, so hand sculpting clay, and part digital math-based design. So we sculpt the car, then we scan it, and then we'll use numerically controlled machines to recut that surface back on the clay. You go back to the sculptors, and they go start finessing the car, change the surfaces, make them blend together the way you want. We started at the very front of the car, and at the very center of the front of the car is your highest wind velocity. Uh, we don't want a bunch of air under the car, because that creates lift, so we have a bunch of air dams. This next car will have a hybrid rear spoiler that touches down in the middle and then has flows air under it on the outboard corners. Developing the aerodynamics, there are things that we do so that we can see the, the cause and the effect. The Corvette has heat exchangers tucked away behind all of the openings. The air runs down the side of the car, and then we actually pump that air through the engine compartment and it's evacuated through the rear wheel openings underneath the car and through vents that we have added to the hatch. It doesn't look like there's any fat in the car at all. All the surfaces are pulled as taut as possible over the mechanicals uh, underneath. And that gives the car a real dynamic energy, something that draws people to it visually. Almost everything is new about this car, and, and of course, for design, we want to leverage that. As we watch the car evolve, we see the themes coming out. We see the car move towards its production shape. We left no stone unturned. We were constantly asking ourselves, could we make something newer, better, more unique? You know, it still had to have the feel and look and maintain the brand Corvette but um, you know, we, we had to do it in a new and unique way. When I come in and see the sculptors and designers and engineers working around the clay model, stepping back, it's like watching a symphony orchestra with the interplay between all the different people to create a unique personality, a character, a soul for a vehicle that people will absolutely resonate with and love. We're going from 10 colors to 12 colors. This will be the most we've ever offered. What we're finding is that our consumers want to bring a little bit of their own identity in the car and really want to exemplify who they are and bring their own emotion out. Yellow has always been synonymous with Corvette racing. One of the new colors that we brought in is what we're calling Accelerate. So we did a lot of research around color theory and found one of the most sensitive areas to the eye is a yellow that has a little bit of blue in it. We took the yellow from where everybody has been used to, which was a little bit more on the red side, and just pumped up the chroma, brought in some of that blue, still the yellow family, but really brings this most noticeable color that we've ever had. Our most iconic color is torch red. It's synonymous with the vehicle and is maintained all the way through the palette to now. Rapid is another real beautiful piece. And what I love about Rapid is it's this really bright blue.
blue. In my personal opinion, it's a little bit more exotic, global, really kind of tells the story of a, of a supercar. Another new color that we're offering is Zeus Bronze. We knew that we wanted to do these more tonal and environmental pieces, and I believe Zeus Bronze ties in with our natural dip, the interior, in a beautiful way. And then the other main point that we did on the interior was the stitching and the seat belts. And this is really giving you a step above black when you go down that path. Then it also really pops the color a bit more. And it really just brings another example of that craft and quality. It's that carries through in every interior in the car. The way I kind of always look at color is that it has to have an opinion. If it's just on there and somebody's just like, oh, it's just gray. It's not just gray. This is sky cool gray. This is a color that has tonality to it and really brings you into it and immerses you in it. Driver mode, which is what most people are used to as tour, sport, track, and weather. Um, my mode and Z mode are actually just two additional modes. And we look at different use cases that people would want to optimize the vehicle for. Tour, we look at it as a balanced mode that's good at everything. Sport is a little bit more catered toward the spirited driving. Track is all about the response and how the vehicle handles around maximum cornering, maximum acceleration, and maximum driver feel of the road. Tour, sport, track, weather, they're all preset. What my mode and Z mode will allow you to do is for the driver to configure it themselves. So if they prefer different steering, different suspension, matched together or matched differently, then they can do that in my mode and Z mode. We allow it to key up in my mode so the driver can personalize their vehicles. And then they'll have it turned on every time they turn on the car. The design intent of Z mode is for a single use case. You could set up Z mode for that curvy road that you go on every day on the way to work. Click on Z mode, do your curvy road, and then go back to my mode and that's your day. You think of a car like the mid-engine Corvette and performance cars in general, the expectation for what that car is is set so high by the exterior. And as the interior design team, you really want to deliver on that promise. We wanted to take the interior kind of the next step beyond uh, what we've done before. This time now you're literally sitting in that cockpit. The controls are wrapping around you in all directions. So I think this car takes that to the next level. It really surrounds you. Once you reset the engine to the middle of the car, that changes everything from an interior perspective. From a front engine, you have a sense that you're behind the front wheels as you turn. And with a mid-engine, you're right close, almost on top of the wheels, and you're more leading the way as you proceed forward in the mid-engine vehicle. It enables you, if you work really hard, to get exceptional forward visibility. You know, something where you have unlimited view. It really allowed us to push the hood low, push the windshield uh, touchdown extremely low, and that really set up an interior position that had these great open sight lines compared to where you normally have an engine out in front of you. So we wanted to make sure that wheel wasn't obscuring it in any way. Now we have flats on the bottom and on the top, creating a roughly rectangular opening that gives you a perfect view of the widescreen reconfigurable display that we have behind there. One thing we're really proud of is our electronic transmission range select. What you normally think of as the lever that goes from park, reverse, neutral, drive. We kept going back to if it was something that you had to stop and think about and look down, it was a failure. The challenge with electronic controls is how do you make them feel mechanical? How do you make them feel real? So we came up with a really unique geometry that can be felt like it's braille. It's extremely intuitive. And now you have a very modern, sleek center console that actually frees up more space for the things you're carrying with you. These little details are what make it feel special. You know, you want to have the customer open the door and really have something that maybe they weren't expecting. And then you realize this thing can only be a Corvette, but it feels like no Corvette you've ever been in before.
what if we could do a new definition of a mid-engine sports car, not just for high-performance driving, but to go on trips, adventures, just make the driving to work an experience. Utility of the car has been something we focused on true, ensuring that we've got a space for people to store luggage or groceries or what have you. So we have a front storage section that's very deep. We've got a trunk in the rear that not only accommodates two bags of golf clubs, but uh, also stows the removable roof panel. So for two people, they can really have plenty of room that they can go on road trips, a car they can take vacations, and that's really what Corvette is about. They've got the high performance aspect, or it can be a great GT car, where you can get in it and go on trips and not have to worry about not having enough luggage and cargo to get where you're going. The dual clutch transmission offers something a conventional manual transmission can't offer a continuous transmission of torque and power to the wheel. This offers ultra-fast and precise shifts that happen in less than 100 milliseconds, and uninterrupted acceleration. A unique feature of this transmission can actually keep 100% of the torque applied during the shift. This transmission is lightning quick. It's a type of transmission worthy of this car. Our goal is combining the driving engagement of a manual with the speed and smoothness of an automatic. We've had customers asking us for a long time for a DCT. The DCT stands for dual clutch transmission. In a traditional car, while you're shifting, the car is actually decelerating because the engine is not connected to the wheels. So we said we needed a bespoke transmission, custom designed, for this car, because we have engines that produce massive amounts of torque, so the DCTs that are on the shelf wouldn't stand the Corvette duty cycle. The transmission team worked with the chassis team to fit the transmission into a package that allowed us to essentially lower the center of gravity, which helps in overall performance. A dual clutch transmission is effectively two manual gearboxes that have clutches actuated by computers on a concentric shaft. So what that really means is you've got a shaft that has your even forward gears, two, four, six, eight, and your odd gears, one, three, five, seven. And you can simultaneously be disengaging one shaft while you're engaging the other one. So it's quicker than a human being could shift a manual transmission. This way you get the lightning fast, less than 100 milliseconds shift when you need it. Uh, we've also found that during very aggressive launches, we can actually drive torque through both shaft clutches simultaneously. So you'll be on an upshift engaging third gear, but still driving torque through second as you're engaging third. This actually improves the zero to 60 performance of the car beyond what you could achieve in a manual transmission. One thing we're really proud of is our electronic transmission range select. What you normally think of as the lever that goes from park, reverse, neutral, drive. We wanted to come up with a design that really was fundamentally intuitive to use. So we've got two toggles that you're gonna interact with the most, your reverse and your drive. Both are pull toggles and they're almost mirrored versions of each other. The challenge with electronic controls is how do you make them feel mechanical? How do you make them feel real? So we came up with a really unique geometry that can be felt like it's braille. Once you get used to it, which doesn't take very long, it's extremely intuitive. And now you have a very modern, sleek center console that actually frees up more space for the things you're probably gonna be carrying with you. The electronic shifter was also really important for us in the sense that making sure that it had movement to it, it wasn't just a simple button. We wanted to make sure it didn't feel like anything else in the rest of the car. It shouldn't feel like a window switch. It shouldn't feel like a button on your uh, volume there. It should be its own special control the same way a regular shifter is on another car. For us, this was that push to do something new and unique and something that would be completely unexpected, yet again, feel uniquely Corvette.
electronic limited slip differential or ELSD was in the previous generation, the C7 Corvette. And so we've taken all that software and kept fine tuning it and refining it. It's basically like a clutch between the two rear wheels. So we can open that up and then they can roll independently. So if you're going around a corner and the car is super agile, if you connect it up, the wheels don't want to turn at a different speed, so then the car kind of plows straight forward. We've got this giant bandwidth there to tune and to make the car feel right in all these different conditions. The other thing that the ELSD software does is it brings in tire temperatures from the tire pressure sensor system and it tells the ELSD, hey, we're in the cold condition right now, we're in the winter, or it's really hot, we're in the summer, so we can tune the performance around the actual temperature of the tires. Corvette should inspire confidence in the driver, and that's what I bring with our tuning of the diff, is to make the driver comfortable, make the driver want to drive harder on the next lap and the next lap and the next lap. A vehicle like the Corvette has very demanding track uh, requirements, so we need a world-class lubrication system. A conventional vehicle has a passive system where oil that's distributed through the engine passively drains back from the various places of the engine and is ultimately collected in the oil pan. In a dry sump system, the oil is actively harvested by scavenge pumps and forcibly pumped from the engine out to an external reservoir. At high engine speeds, every time an engine rotates, the gas wind velocities in the crankcase will actually exceed 100 miles per hour. That tornado of wind causes the oil to froth. When you have a drive sub system, it also gives you confidence that you can take the inertial loads that you encounter on a track. You know, the oil sloshing around in turns or over heaves and really make sure that you can maintain oil pressure at the critical lubrication points in the engine while you're really working it hard and really working it hot. The reason we made it standard in this generation car is it allowed us to lower the engine and transmission as low as possible. And this really lowers the center of gravity of the car, which helps in handling. That lower position enables us to mount directly to the new DCT transaxle to have direct alignment for us to take the energy from the engine and transmit it directly through the transmission into the rear axle. Corvette never disappoints. All your worries go away with one strike of the accelerator pedal. Drivers can now raise the front of their Corvette almost two inches in less than three seconds with the available front lift. This allows you to clear low obstacles such as speed bumps or steep driveways with the help of a two-position hydraulic lifter. While it can be manually activated, it can also be programmed to remember the GPS locations of up to a thousand obstacles throughout your commute so that you don't, for example, have to remember to activate it every time you arrive home to a steep driveway. When I was about 10, a neighbor of ours had a 67 Corvette. And to me, it looked like a spaceship. It was astonishing the sort of visual and emotional power that car had. Growing up, I really was a fan of the concept cars like the Aerovet and the Corvette Indy. And in my mind, that was the obvious vision of where the Corvette needs to go to take it to the next level. The idea of a mid-engine Corvette goes all the way back to the early 60s. Zora Arkus Duntoff, he basically put Corvette on the map. He was mainly focused on absolute performance, nothing else. He lived at a time when the elite race classes were changing, shifting from front engine cars to engines placed behind the driver. You think of the history, the people, the mystique of the car. We're reaching back to the past, to these other automotive legends that started this journey. We're simply taking the baton and taking it across the finish line.
One thing we knew when we started studying a mid-engine car in earnest was that it was possible to do a mid-engine car, but is it gonna be easy enough to live with? Is it gonna have a reasonable amount of luggage? Is it gonna be loud? You know, you got an engine inches behind you. So for us, it was like, how do we deliver that exotic hypercar experience and still make it feel uniquely Corvette? Corvette is more than just a vehicle. It's a lifestyle, it's a feeling, it's a element of passion that I think transcends not only time, but I think generations and cultures over the course of its life. The thing that was striking was when we parked the new car next to the old car. We weren't really appreciating the distinction between what we had, which was really excellent, and where we were going, which was really unbelievable. What's really gonna be exciting is this is gonna be the car for a new generation. When that 2020 Corvette Stingray hits the road, that's gonna be the car. Oh my gosh, it's the car I have to have. When the cars get out on the street and you see them in the real world, it's going to be like the reaction I had when I was about 10, where people will look at it and they just will not believe what they're seeing. Every Corvette comes with two key fobs, and they do everything you'd expect them to do, plus a little bit more. You can open the doors and the front and rear cargo compartments remotely, or if you have the key fob on you, you can unlock the doors, hood, hatch, or trunk manually via the hidden releases on the car. With memory installed on your Corvette, the Carbon Flash logo and the Chrome logo key fobs can be linked to separate drivers. So when you unlock the vehicle, the seat, mirrors, and steering wheel positions will automatically adjust to your preferences. The magnetic ride control is something that's been around for quite a while now. We're now on the fourth generation. This is a semi-active system where you replace all the valving, the ports, and the shock oil with iron particles that you can change the orientation of the particle by applying a current. The most obvious difference is the ability to change the way the car reacts to both driver inputs and road inputs. You know, it can be a very relaxed car. You're not feeling every bump in the road. You go to sport mode and it moves everything up a notch. The car becomes a little more taut, a little more connected to the road. It's a track day, when you go to track mode, it's got all that additional capability for those type of events too. But the control is there when you want it, and it's gone when you don't. It's an interesting bit of history to look back and see how we decided to move away from our comfort zone and started working on a mid-engine car. I think a lot of the leadership thought we want to go to mid-engine because it's cool, you know, because most exotic sports cars in the world were mid-engine, but actually we were doing it because we felt like we were reaching the limit of our performance capability and the architectures that we had. And so we had to do something to move that forward. We put together the compelling arguments why it would make sense to at least study. We ended up presenting to a lot of top leadership to get a critical mass of them on board to say, you know what, these guys might be onto something. When I first heard that they were gonna make the new Corvette mid-engine, really it was a, a game changer. The easiest way to describe it in a single word would be frightening. Um, it's a daunting responsibility. We've had such success, and here we are making this fundamental shift in the car that um, if we don't do right, we potentially uh, do something terrible to this great legacy of a brand. We're bordering on 70 years of this vehicle, so you have this lineage to it that you have to maintain, but you also have to be willing to grow and take it further. From a design standpoint, the vehicle had to be incredibly beautiful, and at the end of the day, when you step back and look at it, it has to say Corvette. 
Everything's backwards on a mid-engine car. You can't move one thing in the inside of the car without affecting a whole bunch of other things. When you put the engine in the back, you actually want to think about moving stuff forward. So to get the right amount of weight on the front, you actually have to move those front wheels rearward. From the driver's perspective, having less weight on the front wheels means you need less boost in the steering, which means more tactile feedback, so more direct steering. You're not sitting out in the periphery and the car rotates about a point distant from you. The car is rotating about you, and that's a very different uh, driving experience. With the mid-engine attributes, you'd have the, the rear weight bias from the engine for better acceleration, performance, and track times, as well as the low forward cowl for excellent visibility and the lighter front, which really makes the car fun to drive. That helps for driver confidence. It helps to get the car around the track safer and faster. Corvette prides itself on being a very light, very stiff vehicle. And we, from the beginning, said we want to take the Corvette formula and apply all that goodness to a mid-engine architecture. We didn't want to fall into the trap where the car gets hard to drive. And that's been the problem we've been working to solve for the last 14 years. What we've developed is a car that really delivers that sort of balance between delivering a modern sports car driving experience and yet delivers the comfort, isolation, and the ability to drive the car on almost any road in any weather. When we finally got to the track, I just burst out laughing because it was like, oh my God, that's what we wanted. You come into corner, you hard brake, you whip the wheel around, it turns on a dime, and then you can get right on the gas and it's just so easy to drive. You could write a book about what Corvette means to all different segments of society. Corvette is an emotional driving experience. No matter who you are in life, when you get into a Corvette, you're a superhero. Every Corvette has standard open air capability. On the coupe, one person can easily remove the roof panel with the release of three latches. It's light and easy to handle and can be stored in the hatch cargo area. In addition to the standard body color removable roof, as an option, you can get either a transparent roof panel or a carbon fiber panel with visible weave and body color side rails. You think of a car like the mid-engine Corvette and the expectation for what that car is is set so high by the exterior and you really want to deliver on that promise. What we wanted to do was kind of go to a three-seat strategy GT1, GT2, and competition. With the GT1 seat, that gives you your perfect everyday kind of driving seating position, comfortable bolsters. The new entry that we have for this one is the GT2. The GT2 seat is really, really an exciting seat. It's a Napa leather. It has the most color blocking opportunities. It's a really beautiful form seat. The other side effect of that is it allowed us to really dial up the competition seat. So we brought in a new material. It does a couple of things. One, it holds you in. And then the other side of it is it eliminates a little bit more leather because every ounce counts on this vehicle, especially when you're tracking it. When we started designing the interior, we wanted to make sure that it felt uniquely Corvette, but it feels like no Corvette you've ever been in before. finally got to the track with real physical hardware, some of us were holding our breath. We were a little bit nervous. The first drive in the car wasn't honestly the most inspiring thing. There's a lot of work we have to do. We will often break things that we honestly didn't expect to break. Track testing really is the essence of what drives our team to achieve things we haven't in the past. If you have a deep relationship with the car that you've developed on the racetrack, where you've pushed it to, to and beyond its limit, you find it opens up this whole window of your brain where you can feel things happening in the car that you would never notice before. 
part of what uh, we're trying to achieve here is to, to make sure that we could fully integrate, fully tune all aspects of the car. The components are all there, the hardware is well baked, there's a lot of calibration work that's required, and we are now taking that final 80% to the finished polished product. If you talk to our ride and handling engineers and our chassis control engineers, they live in that car. That is their office space. That's literally where they go to work every day. So the, the big thing we had to adapt to was our tuning style and how we adapt to a new center of gravity location and, and how we can take advantage of all the rear tire that this car has. Uh, been on different test tracks and had a chance to slide the car around, drift it a little bit on our vehicle dynamic test area. That was very exciting. I've had a chance to ride along on our durability test where we, we really punished the car on Belgian blocks and, and gravel roads and thousands of miles of stuff that a normal Corvette owner would never subject their car to. I've had a chance to uh, be in the car at a cold weather test site on ice and snow where we're challenging the stability systems and, and chassis controls to deliver great performance. And you think about it was just a couple years ago, we were looking at some computer renderings on a screen as the initial bones for the car. Here it is, you know, a very compelling three dimensional machine working at this level. And it was just, uh, it was sort of for me the, the point that I know had, we had really completed the mission that we had set out to do. About a month ago, we were at the track, and uh, I thought, well, this is the last time this is going to be a new thing for me. This is when I get out of the car in 45 minutes after a tank of fuel, this is going to be the Corvette. And it's not going to be the new Corvette, it's going to be the Corvette. That for me was the moment where I saw the, the real light switch on the mid engine architecture was that it's just so easy to be fast and to have fun. Acceleration, speed, zero to 60, zero to 100, 100 to zero, G-forces, GPS location, accelerator and brake usage, gear choice, sound. These are things we've always had in the performance data recorder, along with the ability to analyze your data like a professional engineer using Cosworth Toolbox. Now there's new automated recording options, so the PDR can act like a dash cam that comes on when you start the car. You can also time point-to-point -point road courses that you create and compare your performance on these custom routes day to day. With high definition 1080p recording, the new PDR provides drivers with a higher quality memory of their drive. And if you're worried about how much fun the valet is having with your Corvette, well, the PDR can record that too. On the steering wheel, you will see a Z button. This activates Z mode, which comes from the factory programmed as a more aggressive performance oriented driver setting. You can think of it as going somewhere between sport and track. It can also be customized to a more personal preference. The complexity of driving and performance variables that can be recalled easily with the push of a button is astounding. Every aspect of the vehicle's track performance that you can adjust from steering feel to throttle control, you name it, is right there literally at your fingertips. The Z51 is a performance package that takes the goodness of the Stingray road car and elevates it to a hardcore racetrack beast. The Z51 package includes a lot of performance enhancing items like tires that are more racetrack oriented, brakes are larger, uh, we add a Z51 specific front splitter and a Z51 specific spoiler. The electronic limited slip differential is a huge performance enabler, and it goes on and on. Seeing the Z51 package at work is amazing because we've already exceeded where the current car is. We've got the Z51 now to a level where we're in new territory for the car. We're positioned to rock the world with this one. One of our goals when we style a Corvette is a pure, beautiful, sculptural exterior surface. It also wants to have minimal aerodynamic drag. To do that, one of the things we did was to hide the hood, 
hatch, and door releases. They're all behind other features on the car, giving you that pure sculptural look of this design. As the sum of each generation before it, the next generation Corvette stands alone. As the new standard of precision and performance, of engineering and technology, of everything that makes an icon an icon, and a Corvette a Corvette. Hey, it's Melissa from North Alabama with my 01 C5 Corvette. Thanks for tuning in to the Corvette channel.